In the process of turning pages to pictures, things get left out or added. How has Netflix managed in trying to make this famous comic into a show, though? Sit tight to find out nine key differences that stood out between the show and the books. The Corinthian's expansion For the Corinthian, his role might have been exaggerated a bit in the show. While his role as a nightmare in the book wasn't just as significant, Netflix may have upgraded his importance on the screen. As one of the several creations of Dream, he didn't have as much time tracking him down in the comics as he did in the show. The Corinthian appears to be powerful and capable of defying Dream in any way he sees fit. He could even go as far as hurting Dream. When Dream tried to confront him at the serial convention, he had a hard time unmaking him especially since he was one of his creations. However, in the comics, he didn't even feature just as much, and Dream could undo him easily. The showrunner, Alan Heinberg, explained that they expanded on his role because they were trying to give the fans more of what they'd love. He said, More Dream, more Corinthian, more backstory, more of everything in every relationship. So that there were surprises for even the most die-hard Sandman fans. We wanted to delight and surprise them. For a nightmare, it's understandable why his character arc was expanded for the team. TV series. The fans like what he brings on the show, and if Dream decides to make him sometime soon, then the Corinthian is definitely coming back bigger. And he definitely might not stop being a nightmare for Dream. Dream and Lucifer fight For one, the famous battle of the show between Lucifer Morningstar and Dream never happened in the comics. Instead, Dream is faced with a demon Charonzon, who challenges Dream and who Dream ends up defeating. But when Dream went into hell to find and fight the demon Charonzon who was holding his helm, he came face to face with Lucifer himself. Lucifer ended up playing the oldest game with Dream after Charonzon chose him as his representation in the game. And to make matters worse, Dream ended up defeating Lucifer sourly in front of all the demons. This event has made Lucifer very angry and set against Dream. None of these events happened in the comics, but it appears that Netflix has a vision, and that's to bring more chaos to the show. Lucifer going after Dream is definitely a big difference that'll switch up how things happen in the comics. Joanna Constantine introduction. According to the comics, Joanna Constantine wasn't the one who helped Dream locate his sand pouch. It was John Constantine who got substituted for Joanna. The writer explains why they had to exchange John for Joanna, as it's something that has to do with rights. They are certainly not licensed to portray the John Constantine character on the show. And with this exchange and difference from the comics, the TV series is able to link up Joanna's role with Lady Joanna from the 18th century. And it definitely was a cool introduction that the fans enjoyed. But the scene where Lady Joanna exposes how she found out about Dream and Hobgadling's secret meetings was also not as it was portrayed in the comics. Also, the jaw-breaking scene when Joanna performed an exorcism on a princess's fiancé wasn't available in the comics as it never happened. The explanation of why Joanna suffers from nightmares that was shown in the Casanova Club sequence was only touched on a bit in the comics while the show expanded on it more. John Dee's motivation It's as if Netflix dug out a rugged John Dee's character from the comic and brought out a polished version in the show. As portrayed in the comic, he was arrested by the Justice League and imprisoned at Arkham Asylum for using the Dreamstone. His comic motivation was to cause wreckage and chaos to the world, using the Dreamstone to achieve his aim of being recognized as the king. The show is now much calmer and possibly better regarding John Dee, as he became a better person who'd rather settle for a more stable world. He wanted to use the Dreamstone to achieve an honest world in instead because of how much he'd been deceived over the years. Also, in the comics, it was John Dee who got rid of Rosemary, the taxi driver, when she drove him. But in the show, he was able to look more closely and even appreciate how awesome Rosemary was by blessing her with an amulet for her protection. Whatever Netflix saw in John Dee to have changed his negative motivations is actually something fun to see and an inspiration as well. Roderick's confrontation with Alex in an attempt to capture death and bring back his deceased son, Roderick Burgess manages to capture Dream instead during his ritualistic summons. When he found out he got Dream instead of death, he tries to deal with the Endless family to revive his son Randall before Dream could be freed. But the twist here is that Roderick has two sons in the show and only one in the comics, which is Alex. He confronted his other son, Alex, and talked down to him about how he'd never be enough or live up to his expectations of him. The confrontation between father and 
and son continued till the old man became weary and accidentally hit his head on the glass that held together where Dream was being kept. But in the comics, this conflict never happened between them. Instead, Roderick kept begging Dream to grant him the gift of immortality in exchange for his freedom. In the end, he died of natural causes of old age, without the painful incident that happened on the show. Cain and Abel's Gregory In the comics, Cain and Abel played a much bigger part than what was seen on the show. The biblical characters Cain and Abel are residents of the Dreaming. Their gargoyle, Gregory, was the first to discover Dream, who was weak and wounded after escaping from Roderick's prison. Cain and Abel brought Dream in and started to take care of him in order to bring him back to his health. They even showed him their letters of commission, which he created, and he absorbed them to get stronger. However, in the show, what happened between the time Dream escaped from Roderick and his discovery was very different. After he was able to get himself back into the Dreaming, Lucien was the one who found Dream lying down by the beach. In his weak state, he was able to explain to Lucien what he needed to do to get back his strength. And disappointingly, it turned out Dream was referring to Gregory, which is owned by Cain and Abel. The painful demise of Gregory happened as Dream absorbed him for strength. If Netflix had followed the comics, innocent Gregory would still be alive. Cain and Abel aren't happy with what Dream did either. Serial Convention The serial convention in the comics was portrayed with some tweaks in the TV adapted series. For a start, Rose goes with her mother Miranda to the hotel as she's still living and well in the comics. But in the TV series, Rose goes with Lighter instead. Also, the organizers of the serial convention didn't use the Corinthian's crimes against him as seen on the show. Instead, it was the Corinthian himself that called them up and offered to be in attendance. Another of the most interesting parts of the convention that happened in the comics differently was when Rose got attacked. She was the one who got attacked by Funland and was able to take Gilbert's advice to call out for Morpheus whenever she was in danger. Rose was then able to meet Morpheus for the first time after he showed up to rescue her. But in the show, Jed gets attacked instead of Rose. There's a whole character difference between the show and the books in this case. Instead of the way Jed was attacked in the show, he was captioned by the Corinthian instead, and Gilbert was able to locate and return him to Rose in the comics. The Era Presentation The comic books, places, time and technology follow the culture and practices of the time in which they were written. The period Neil Gaiman used in writing the comics expanded from 1989 to 1996. However, the show took a step forward in this regard. Just as the time Netflix is adapting the series to, many of the language and technologies have improved and portray the 2020s era. Like in the portrayal of smartphones in the show, which were clearly not available at the time Neil wrote down this masterpiece. However, the show did a great deal by making references to some of the outdated technologies in the books. One such reference is the huge telephone in Unity's house. Hob Gadling and William Shakespeare's characters also got an upgrade from the 1400s of the comics to the present day in the show. Dreams looks. It's super obvious that the characters in the show have been touched up and are less graphic than those portrayed in the comics. The show has brought more human energy and distinct expressions, which has made this fantasy show more relatable and profound. The way Dream looks is supposed to reflect the power of the Endless Family, according to the comics. His eyes are supposed to be dreamy, especially. It's meant to be dark, with shining stars in it, and to reflect some sort of deep but calm expression as the comics illustrate. And his siblings, Death and Delirium, are the ones that should look more human following their comic description. But instead, Dream's eyes look more human than they should be in the show, but then the fans can see through his expressions and understand this character even much better. His hair also appears shorter than in the comics, and by bringing the graphics into the flesh, he definitely looks more like a person in the show. Do you think the differences are a bit too far apart, or do they make the show more fun? Share your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching.